All right, what's good, guys? We're back. We haven't touched the car in a while, but we're going to be touching it tonight and hopefully getting closer to finishing. First drift event is this weekend. Today is Tuesday, so we have Wednesday, Thursday night, Friday night if necessary. I'm hoping by Friday night I can get some some testing in and, you know, just some, some handbrake pulls and some skids on the street just to make sure everything good is good and just kind of feel it out a little bit before we head to the track on Saturday. So fingers crossed we can get everything done for the track day. So I'm just eating some Taco Bell in an advanced auto parts parking lot right now. I'm just waiting for Paulie. He just got home from work a little bit ago, so I'm waiting for him before I head over and Tyler's gonna come help us out too tonight. But I'm happy that I'm able to make a video again and uh, we're back working on the car. So let's get into it. So Paulie cut the backing plate off for the parking brake stuff. So it exposes the trailer arm, put the rotor on and is currently measuring to mount the first gen caliper tabs back in there. Oh yeah, and we're at Polly's. I didn't I jump to that and uh, we're working on the car. So <laughs> I think that would just be assumed. Yeah, well at this point. They might start recognizing the house as well from the shop. <laughs> <laughs> Hitting the car with a quick oil change. I put oil in it before Florida, and it smells like gas after the drift event, like it you know usually does on this car. So I'm gonna put some Rotella and some Penzoil synthetic in here just for now. Once it starts getting hotter, I'm gonna switch back to Redline, which I normally run the 2050, because these cars for warmer climates, and especially if you're on the track, the factory service manual actually calls for 2050 for the turbo cars. So why not run it? and have good oil pressure, then worry yeah. about thinning out some 530 just when some, it gets hot. Get some and, zero 20, dude. It'll be yeah, zero. run some zero weight. There are guys on the forums that run zero weight, like zero why? cold. Why would you want to do that? I don't know. I, I have no idea. idea. They complain about the lifter tick. Right, well, I'm like, I'd rather have a couple seconds of lifter tick with a thick oil. The, yeah, yeah. Can you find pads for this? Did the pad surface fall off? The, yeah, the brake material came off. <laughs> <laughs> They're kind of seized in there anyway. All right. Uh, like I, I feel like first like from what I did trying easy. to compress the caliper. Yeah. Shouldn't have. No. Wow. Whole, I was hoping the whole. Dude, yeah, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Wow. That's wow. Like I was hoping that came out because they're stuck in there. But bro, like this is I just the like the pad material. Yep. We can get it. Out. <laughs> I can get pads tomorrow at work. All right. Cool. We got Hawks in the stack. Let's, let's some uh, HPS. No, <laughs> some HPS 5.0s. So I didn't show you guys the other night because I wasn't recording. We were over here for a little bit doing some stuff. I got the battery cable ran into the engine bay and through the firewall. So that is that. This red cable here is for the switch panel. So that's gonna be hooking to the cutoff switch as well. And then this cable here is for the starter, such as powers everything else. So these two are gonna go on one side of the battery cutoff switch. And this will go on the other side of the battery cutoff switch. Waiting for that to come in still because instead of having the one that I used to have mounted up here, I'm actually going to mount it in the hood. Probably like right around here. All right, so it's Wednesday night. Next night, we didn't do a whole lot last night. Well, we did. Paulie did. He made the. Well, he, he marked out stuff and then cut stuff today. And Cardboard. Firewall. First piece of the firewall is laid in like so. Basically how we're gonna do it is we're gonna make little triangle like winglets uh, to block this section off out of just the thin sheet aluminum there. And this is the thicker piece of steel that we just bent. And uh, we're gonna have a third piece that will rivet onto here that will go up and seal across the window. Uh, when it comes down, it'll probably be just a couple inches tall, but that is pretty much how it's gonna look as far as the firewall goes. I don't know if I showed you guys a close-up view the other night. Actually, I don't think I did because the backing plate was still on, but this is what the rear trailing arm on a VR4 looks like with the backing plate off. There's a uh, stud that goes through here and then a bolt here and then one on this side that uh, you take out and the backing plate is loose and then we cut the backing plate in half and pried it off from around here. So now you just have a free hub stub shaft and the trailing arm. These are the tabs for the stock caliper. And this area over here is where we're gonna be welding the tabs for the dual caliper. Got some new Hawk brake pads, the HPS street pads. They're the only ones that we had in stock. 
for these rear calipers. So these should give us the bite and the grab that we need in the handbrake. Uh, we're also gonna be utilizing stock lines. So I got these uh, OEM, these are actually OEM front hard lines for a VR4. And these are the inward most rear lines. So using the stock caliper for reference, it's not this line. I have this piece and this line uh, that we're gonna be using to connect the caliper to a hard line that we come in out from the car. I'm gonna take my handbrake out. So I gotta take the whole plate out so I can take the handbrake off the plate and we're gonna have to figure out how to mount it to get the uh, new master, the little reservoir to just kind of sit snug up in here. So I'm taking all the bolts out. There's four bolts that hold the shifter assembly down. So I'm just getting this last one out here. Let's see if I can get it by hand. 3SX short shifter here, three inch torque solutions extender. Now I have my serial nine knob that goes on top. Serial nine knob is probably one of my favorites that I put into this car. Last bolt. So now the whole shifter assembly is loose. So that means the whole handbrake assembly can slide out. All right, so I swapped the master cylinder out from the handbrake, the little eBay handbrake here. You do have to, if you're using the eBay handbrake with a Willwood master, you do have to swap out the rod from one to the other. So the Willwood rod thread pitch is different. So there's a little snap ring in there and you just swap the eBay rod under the Willwood master cylinder, how I had it before. I have a video, if you guys look back on the channel, um, that breaks it down on swapping this rod and basically adapting a Willwood master cylinder to an eBay handbrake that you guys can check out if you're interested in more of that information. Now I'm gonna slide it into the car and see if this master cylinder clears my seat. And that is what I'm hoping happens. I'm hoping it clears because I don't feel like trying to move this thing and finagle it over and widen these holes to just get it to fit. I hope it just slides right in with no issue. All right, before my phone dies, wrapping up tonight, master cylinder clears the seat. So we're done with the master cylinder. Next is gonna be uh, running the custom brake line. We're gonna do a hard line instead of the AN stuff for the uh, handbrake. Got a little piece of pipe on here too. So we are in good, good shape with this. It is now Thursday. We're jumping around pretty quickly here because uh, we're just working on projects that are taking a while. So there's not much to record. Uh, but we went to the parts store. We got a brass union T for the hard line to split off to the two calipers. We got uh, some fresh bolts for all the calipers, the new ones and the ones that were already on the car. A breather filter that I'm gonna use for the fuel cell and some two gauge, three eighths inch uh, lugs for the starter cable that is gonna connect to the battery switch. So let's get started on the cutoff switch. The area that I want it to be is behind the sail panel. My car's so dusty, so you can kind of see the mark. But if I'm thinking like right around here, it's about two inches behind the little blister. All right, as you can see by my drawings in the dirt here, which is so good for my wrap, um, I'm gonna be drilling the hole right here. It's gonna be on a little bit of an outward angle. Uh, that's the really only spot it's in far on the hood, but that's the only spot that I get that there's nothing underneath uh, wiper motor or the shock tower. These cars are super wide, but that comes with the real estate, the lack of real estate underneath the hood because it's shock tower and wiper cows, huge and all that. So I'm just going to go right in the middle of that hole there and throw her in and uh, get this thing wired up. Got a hole. I got it in. And now I'm going to start laying out where I'm going to put the cables. So this is going easier than I thought. Let's see if it drops in the right place. Ooh, yeah. That'll be good. Yep, that'll be perfect. Battery cable and the fuse block power cable. That's shortened, so that comes out of the car. I'll pull any slack. I want to leave a little bit of slack, so I'll pull the slack once I know how much I have to work with back through the firewall. And then I just got this connector. I gotta straighten the end out. Put this connector onto the uh, starter cable. 
So I'll be able to hook that up as well. Slides right up on there. So that should be everything I need to do to get this thing to work. I just gotta notch a little piece down there to put the heat shield back around the starter. And then we can try, I'm gonna take that whole thing to insulate it off. And then we can try to get power back through this thing, put some fuel into the tank, run the pump, make sure nothing leaks, all that good stuff. Fingers crossed that it works. All right, so that's tight. We got a hood mounted cutoff switch. These are all tight, she ain't going nowhere. So now I'm just gonna tape all around these terminals to protect them just in case. And uh, we'll be all right. I'm gonna zip tie these, clean this up a little bit more, but uh, otherwise looking good, that's done. Then I'll be able to notch this, the heat shield over there. I'm gonna put some gold tape on it to protect the starter from more heat. And we'll get power through this thing and get some fuel pumping. Like that. All right, so the battery's hooked up, switch is turned on, fuel pump kicks on, car turn cranks, adding fuel to the cell to make sure nothing leaks. All right, so fuel. Just keep it on the lines. What? Keep it on the lines yeah. for leaking. Go ahead. Oh, oh, she she fuel. oh yeah, she's coming back. Yeah. Come back. Let me see what the pressure is under the hood. Oh, we got good pressure too. I might have to turn the pressure down up here a little bit. Fire right up. Not bad. Not bad for just using my hands. Yeah. And what? Oh yeah, it goes down through there. Cool. Yeah, that's that's a that's a nice that's nice beautiful. bend. Nice bend for some hand Fucking use. Deal. Yeah. Just gotta flare it. What do you do? God, what'd you do? <laughs> I gotta flare it. Alright guys, it's Friday night now. This video is jumping all over the place, but we've been just trying to grind and get everything done. Stansco Street Club embroidered crew neck looking good i love this thing first time wearing it probably gonna wear it tomorrow too but i'm gonna take it off so i don't mess it up these are gonna be available guys so keep an eye out uh just i'm gonna start you know doing some embroidered stuff like this stansco street club to support the program support driving and getting to events and you know the fuel costs the entry fees and things like that so any little bit helps uh, i'll be releasing a store eventually when um it gets you know when i get it time to put it together so we have a lot of work to do. We're gonna get started. Actually, I'm the only one here right now, but Polly's on his way back. He ran out and got weather stripping. I got the rest of the brake fittings on my way over at one store uh, that we're gonna need to do the hydro and Steph's bringing food and Kyle's coming to hang out. So all hands are on deck tonight. Let's see if we can pull it off because we gotta leave for the track at 6.30 tomorrow morning. So what I'm gonna do first uh, while I wait for the guys to get here, I got these speed bleeders. Uh, from the parts store. They're like the Dorman brand and they have a little check valve in them. So it's like a one-man bleeder So I'm going to pull this one out the factory bleeder and Get rid of it. It's all crusty After the event, I'll probably clean these up a little bit Ugh, that fluids gross too and screw the speed bleeder right on in there so i don't know if you guys can see but here's the line that comes out we got the t right here made the first line it goes in and that's going to go to the back passenger side caliper and it comes up right around the factory location uh we're gonna i still have this tab on here we're gonna kind of recreate that 
and have a mount point for it because I'm gonna I have the rubber hose that's gonna go jump from the caliper to here. I made a, another flared one there and I'm gonna run it from the split, come all the way over to the left side. It's kind of dark over here, but left side right here, same deal, you know. And uh, Polly just set up the welder, the 220 welder, and he's gonna weld the tabs on. So here's a little look for you guys. This is what the tabs look like. It's basically just a straight piece of metal here, straight piece of metal there. And it's welded to the trailing arm to mount that second caliper. And the factory caliper, it's laying right here. That mounts right there in the factory location. All right, Paul, you just finished welding this. We got tabs. That looks dope. And that is how we get the dual caliper bracket. Oh shit, you paint it too? Yeah. Nice. Look at that. Test, test fit time. I smelled something over there and I was like, I don't, I don't know. Okay, I smelled it and then when I walked around, I didn't see you spraying anything. I was like, I don't know what I'm smelling right now. <laughs> so moral of the story is two JZs are the the life, and so are T's, and, and we're going drifting tomorrow. The new oh. super needs a two JZ. There you go. All right. First three thousand GC dual caliper bracket. Right here. <laughs> you don't know what That's it. <laughs> yeah, that looks dope. Oh, it'll work. It'll Put the wheel on, dog. Let's see it. Throw her up there. Oh, that looks cool. Yeah. <laughs> I'm painting those white. What, the calipers? Mm -hmm. With the fucking... Oh, is that why there's that white line on it? Uh-huh. I thought I scratched light? it yesterday, but... No, no. What the happen? I know. So originally we were going to use a hard line and the inside line and all that crap. So I bought new inside and outside lines for the stock setup. So where this caliper lines up, we just routed the outside line right in to the factory mount location, which is kind of amazing that it lines up like that. And we're gonna take the new hard line, bend it wow. around, and screw it right in. That literally is perfect. We might have to make a longer line for the other side that we already flared if we can't reach uh, like this does, but we'll see once we get over there. But this is literally couldn't be any more perfect than how it is right now. Whoa, whoa, whoa! Oh, whoa, oh, get this camera out of my face! The master flares! Oh, there's something missing. <laughs> Something missing. Whoa, I got it right here. Oh, it fell off. I just let me do a magic trick real quick. Why don't you just cut it in half and then overlay it on the on the tube? <laughs> Jesus. Get the oh, cutters out. Oh, you see that flare? It's so good. Oh, look at that. Get the cutters out. <laughs> All right, so here's an update. I'm just sitting outside on the trailer, <laughs> taking a break. Um, Kyle's cutting the left side quarter panel right now. I painted the calipers on the right side. Um, once Kyle is done cutting that quarter panel, Polly can weld the tabs on for the dual caliper bracket. And um, I just touched up some paint on the tube rear. We're kind of just banging stuff out at this point. And I think we should be good to make it tomorrow. All right, guys. So the guys are still working on the car. I ran home to pack the truck because it's a lot easier without the trailer on it. So just to give you guys an idea, let me unlock it so the lights turn on. There we go. All right, so in the Suburban, this is why I love this thing. Took the third row out, second row is still folded up because four of us are going down tomorrow. I have three 245, 40, 17s. 275, 40, 18. 245, 40, 17. Another 275, 40, 18. They're Jeff's uh, on the Gram lights. Race fuel container, Jeff's. Jack, giant toolbox. Two tables, a tent, a box with rear S13 knuckles for Jeff as well. And we still have, look at all the room we have up on the top there. I can still see clear out the back window. This is pretty awesome because being that I'm packing for two people for this, um, two of Jeff's wheels are going to go on the trailer. And I have the RPF ones that are on the car right now that I'm just going to keep on there uh, just in case I need them as a spare or backup of some sorts. But yeah, solid tents in. I think that's about it. I'm only bringing one set of wheels because those still have 
uh, crappy tires on them. So I'm bringing one set of wheels with half used tires that I was using in Florida and then one brand new set of tires. And then if I, I'm not gonna need them, but if I did need them, I have the RPF ones that are currently on there. So I'm gonna make one last scan through. Gotta grab my helmet. <laughs> um, grab my helmet, two jack stands, and then uh, head on back over to Paulie's house. Keep on working. This is the update. <laughs> it's two o'clock. Haven't updated it in a while. Poly radius, this top piece. We're just adding some little tight pieces right here. And then we're gonna like seam seal across to seal that off. It's all tacked up. A couple more tacks though. A couple more tacks and then seam seal it to block it off. We got the weather strip here to seal up against the window. We put fuel cell foam from Speedway into the cell. We don't gotta worry about sloshing issues. Gotta tighten the battery terminal. We do have to tighten the battery terminal. Um, Tyler and I raise the rear, we got the rear just about even. The only thing that we really have to do is finish this up, tighten the cables, and that was was the one other thing we had to do tonight. Test. Oh yeah, test to make sure it works, I think. I'll check the list and make sure we're... Oh, we gotta tie up all the lines oh, yeah, underneath, underneath the car. The, car yeah. Yeah. the only thing that we really have to do is finish this up, Tighten the cables, and that was was the one other thing we had to do tonight. Test. Oh yeah, test to make sure it works, I think. I'll check the list and make sure we're...